Okay, for Bombs Away, I was like, ooh. <laughs> what if before the actual intro of the song, there was like wind blowing? You could kind of hear it, but kind of not really, because it was like, I, I wasn't as committed to the, uh, I wasn't as committed to the idea <laughs> after a while. There you go. It's in there, uh, but it's, it's mixed down. When I heard it on, I heard it on the radio, and I was like, the wind is kind of loud. Can you hear it? You can hear it on the radio. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And then something else that I've talked about is, is the acoustic guitar intro. The little riff that you hear is a riff that we've had, or that I had for, like, with the, back in the old days, and tried to find a million different ways to make it work, because I always thought it had such a mood to it, and it, that it was a... Anyway, it never quite worked. It never landed. And then I, I had forgotten about it, um, and it was probably four or five years ago at a sound check, and Brian just stumbled on that riff again, and then we both started playing it together. I was like, ooh, man, this is a good riff. And then I remembered the little change we had, and, and it was just a, it just never found a home. Like we, I couldn't find the right change for it or the right direction. It was just this little thing that was cool. And that stuck in the back of my head when, when, uh, when I was demoing for this record. So initially I'd put together the whole song based around that riff. And then at the end, I had this sort of outro section with the riff that has now become what you hear is the main sort of identifiable part of Bombs Away. And then... Okay, and if you listen really closely, if we can solo the drums, you'll hear Seiku's left foot keeping time on the hi-hat stand. But the toms were still ringing, so we couldn't mute it. So you can still hear a, you can still hear a Converse Chuck Taylor... <laughs> I was like, Gah. <laughs> but listen, like just here, here after the. Well, I never noticed that before. Yeah, I know we do, <laughs> tried everything to to erase Duh. it, but ah. it's still there. Something I really love about this chorus that I think makes the chorus pop is is the uh, the clean parts or the, what we always call ding dongs that come in in the in the chorus this is this is sort of a signature part of the chorus that uh, that i just adore i think makes it sends the chorus Did you hear that Did you end up doing any Dave bombs in there? I didn't actually. There, I did them. They're not in there though. Oh. I don't think we ended up using any of them. Dave has a trick that he can do with the bass that it's, it's like a guitar player would go boom, like a dive bomb, but we call it a Dave bomb, and he does it with his bass. Somehow. Yeah. That gave us the idea of the the Dave bombs. It was like, what's the next level of a Dave bomb? Would be a sub drop. I didn't know anything about sub drops, but yeah. um, <laughs> Zach. A piranha, the the assistant on the or the engineer on 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 the session knows all about sub drops. Yeah. There are all kinds of different sub drops. It's used in like EDM music. Or yeah, I think we specifically said like one that'll make you feel kind of sick. Yeah, like, and that's Oof. what we got. This is before the last chorus. You get you get this sweet little. <laughs> 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 it's just a gag. It's fun. It's a fun one though. We can go over the solo. I did a I. There's a harmony in the solo that's kind of tucked. Yeah, and then doubled. Anyway, yeah. Throw your hands in the way. 
there you go. Um, so yeah, there's a there was a, a harmony that comes in sort of halfway through the solo, harmonizes with the line, and then doubles the the rest of it. <laughs> 